Good morning. I'm Richard Verhoeves, the Bald Explorer, and I'm taking a, a little walk. I'm in Grafham in West Sussex, which is just south of Petworth, um, and I'm heading up here. Up here, you can see this mountainous number of mountainous number of trees. I've been reading recently a book by an author called Marion Showard. I think that's how it's pronounced. She's written a series of fascinating books about the countryside. And the first one is called The Theft of the Countryside. And it was published in 1980. It's 40 years out of date this year. However, although it was reporting on things that were happening in the UK countryside back then, it gives us a, a fascinating history of what's happened in this last 40 years and the devastating things that have happened to the countryside that we may, may not on first viewing be aware of. And one such thing in, illustrated in her book was Grafham Down and I'm on the South Downs I'm just scrambling up which is why I'm I'm out of breath and I'm coming through this stretch of downs which I say which is between well Petworth and Midhurst I, we're just south of Petworth a little bit to the east of that but right at the north face of the downs and very different from the downs above Brighton where I have been walking fairly recently this one is covered in trees and this slope this northern slope has beautiful beech some hazel and uh, holly particularly and then probably as we get up towards the top some ash and this these slopes probably haven't changed for thousands of years but it's very hard work <laughs> clambering up because it's it's not it's not vertical but it's bloody close there's a path which I'm on clearly <laughs> and it leads up from St Giles's Church and it takes you up about 500 to 600 feet onto the the top of the downs and it goes through all this this lovely old wood bits of um, by the looks of things, this is hazel I'm hanging on to. So bits of coppiced wood and beech, as I mentioned before. It's uh, very, very beautiful. And uh, you don't have to go on quite so direct route. You can see here that there is a, a little, little lane, permissive path, I think that is, um, which presumably the estate the Bar Lavington estate can access, I think, because that is also close to uh, or next to Grafham. But I'm taking the more direct route up these stairs. It's good exercise and I like climbing. I do like climbing. Anyway, the point of this is to see a stretch of down. I read about this in the book as an example of how the countryside has been and was after the war being stolen, changed its purpose into monoculture for farming. The desperate need after the war to continue to feed ourselves seems to have been taken to the nth degree and great swathes of ancient countryside 
historic countryside with tumuli or tumuli depending on how you want to pronounce it um, enclosures burial mounds have been lost not to mention the wildflowers the insects the mammals and so forth which have been here for generations and the fact that they're they're lost means they cannot be easily replaced coming into these much younger beech trees now we're coming through a slightly different area as we get more light streaming through we've got ferns here on the ground beautiful looking ferns and we've got quite stunning logs that have fallen and become habitats for all sorts of different insects and insects is very much an important key to the story here we've got yew trees now look at this beautiful yew quite a tall yew goes right up up there to get some sunshine the light on this sunny morning I've been very blessed actually it's just beautiful coming through the beech leaves as it would have done for centuries and once up at the top we have some stunning views hopefully um, if we can see above the trees down to Grafham to Bar Lavington to Petworth possibly to Black Down and to then onto the North Downs Look at this beautiful track here through the woodland behind me, fantastic. This area on the top and for a mile this way, just over a mile and I don't know what it is width-wise but huge, we'll have a look in a minute, um, is quite ancient down, but so much of it is. According to Marion Sherwood, a lot of forestation has happened on the top of the downs with conifers which take away our natural deciduous trees and place pines and the thing about pines is they're often in plantations planted very close together they block out all year round with their canopy of uh, needles the ground the underwood dies and everything that's supported in there the beautiful wild plants die and can no longer exist and consequently the insects go and because the insects go the next up the chain the mammals go and when the mammals go the birds go and so on and so forth and they're no longer here this stretch of down was for a long time the last bit of preserved down and it's important to know what that means the turf on the top very springy with uh, wild flowers and many varieties something like 50 different varieties all providing food and accommodation for different insects providing food for birds and and all of that amazing carpet of downs and quite unique and one of the rarer species certainly butterflies would have been here in in huge numbers up until 1979 40 years ago This is, this is the downs, this is the, this is the variety of landscape that would have been on the top of the downs here. As you can see, a huge variety of wonderful plants stretching for huge distance. It is a mile. There are footpaths across this and the biodiversity in amongst these wild flowers was very very important oh sorry I must have got the wrong eye in Th this is barley isn't it oh yes this is a monoculture of barley for miles all the way along here now I don't know who currently farms this and if you happen to be watching this isn't aimed at you at all 40 years ago a Dutchman came over 
and wanted to farm this bit of land. He asked the authorities, can I farm this bit of land? And they said, well, it needs to go for a public con con consultation. And that's what it did. The consultation went ahead. The villagers in the area were horrified as soon as they found out this information and they protested and tried to stop it. It wasn't their fault that it failed. It wasn't the farmer's fault that it won. According to Marion in her book, and she details this more than I can um, put in a video like this, the reason it failed was the mechanism that would have enabled the, the protesters and various bodies to have saved that important piece of land. The mechanism failed. And as a consequence, there is this huge stretch of monoculture on top of the downs, which is regrettable. Uh, I've come to the end now. I've walked to the end of the tip of this wedge, which goes back that way for a mile, for a mile. So we can get across here. On the north side, beyond the fence here, is the South Downs Way. Is it, or is this the South Downs Way? This might be the South Downs Way that I'm on here. I know the South Downs Way. Oh yes, there we go. I've not been here before. So this bit is the South Downs Way, which we can walk on. We don't get the views <laughs> looking that way because of the trees. The South Downs Way is the ancient path that goes from Winchester to Eastbourne, 100 miles. And I often refer to it because obviously there's people who, who watch from abroad and may not necessarily know. So it's a, it's a very famous long distance path. For a mile and a bit, this, which were rides, gallops, you could go through here. The turf, as I said before, was springy. It was delightful. A lot of wildlife right at the top, supporting different wildlife, different insects from down in the trees on the slopes, different habitats for different things. Now you might say, oh, it's a shame. Of course it's a shame, but why are we that bothered? This is not a unique example of what was happening in the 50s until the 90s, really. This digging up of hedgerows, digging up of ancient meadows, old scrubland, rough ground which was supporting uh, wildlife, a lung for the nature of this country, was being ploughed over, planted with monocrops like a prairie here of just barley. And because it's, it's one long mile, there's no hedges, we don't have, you know, like, like the English countryside that we've all grown up to believe exists with the hedgerows and the little square fields and all that, that's all gone. But this is everywhere now, this great swathe. The damage has been done. Farmers I do know now are plant planting set-asides, breathing areas. But whether they're actually putting in the crops that are good for the wildlife, I don't know. So I'm going to be talking about more about this in future videos. And I wanted to come up here and just see it for myself because I want to know what happened in the past and the mistakes that were made and what it's actually like today. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you giving me your time. Uh, why not become a patron and support what I do? A small donation um, really helps put petrol in the car. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Till then, bye bye, bye bye.